Lift up your hand wherever you are. Declare that God is faithful to his people. That God is faithful to his word. That God is faithful to the covenant. Just lift up your hands. Declare that you serve a faithful God. And that God is faithful in your life. Lord, you are faithful. You are faithful. To all those that put their trust in you, you are faithful. To those that serve you faithfully, you are faithful. To those that honor you, you are faithful. To those, to those that love you, you are faithful. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We give thanks and we appreciate you, Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, where will we be without you? You are our enabler. You are our enabler. You are our helper. You are our teacher. And Lord, even this morning, we appreciate the Holy Spirit for his works in our midst, for his help to his people, for his grace unto the church. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Lord Jesus, we wouldn't exist without you. You are alive today because Jesus gave his life for you. That exchange, we must appreciate it all the days of our life. We are alive today because Jesus gave his life that we may live. There is no greater sacrifice than that. And therefore, Lord, we say thank you. Lord Jesus, we honor you. We celebrate you. We say thank you and thank you and thank you and thank you. You are always doing good. From January to today, you have kept us. From January to today, many passed away. Many are in the hospital. Many have become disabled this year. But Lord, but Lord, within us, we see your mercies. We see your faithfulness. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say, Jesus is good to me. Say, Jesus is faithful to me. Say, I cannot live without his love. Praise the Lord. Reach out to two or three people. Tell them, I'm alive today because of the love of Christ. Reach out. I am alive today. I am alive today because, because of the love of Christ. Yes, we are alive today because of his love. And if you want to be alive tomorrow, what do you do? Love the Lord. Amen? We are alive today because of his love. If we want to be alive tomorrow, we should love him. We should do what? Love. Moses said, love the Lord with all your heart. He said that it may be well with you. He said that it may be well with you. For anybody that will love the Lord, it will be well with you. It will be well with your children. It will be well with your generation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say, God is awesome. God is awesome. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
Are you happy that you are in the month of December? Why? Why? You are best month. Born in December? Amen. Why are you happy about the month of December? Don't tell me because of the rice and turkey and chicken. That's why you are happy? For the month of December? Because you are alive. What about November? Amen. Amen. Ah. May the love of Christ be manifested in you. Amen. Are you hearing me? May the love of Christ be manifested in you. Amen. A life without Christ is crisis. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. A life without Christ is crisis. May you not have crisis. Amen. But may you have Christ. Amen. May you have Christ. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. You know, there's something I say. No Jesus, no life. Did you hear? No Jesus, no life. N-O, no Jesus, N-O, no life, right? But there's something I also say. No Jesus, and no life, K-N-O-W. No Jesus, and no Jesus, they sound alike, right? But they are not the same. Amen. So let's say it together. No Jesus, no life. And no Jesus, say I'm blessed. Say I'm blessed. Our God is good. Our God is good. Take your seats. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, how many of you participated in the praying and fasting last week? Last week, Praying and fasting. How many of you participated for one week? Uh huh. And then the members, only very few of you. Wow. Wow. So you left it for the church workers, the leaders, to let them do the fasting while we eat. Amen. Amen. We fasted while you were eating. And then on Friday, we had an all night where you were sleeping. Amen. But we prayed for you. Amen. We prayed for you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want to talk to us about something today that I call life in Christ. Praise the Lord. Life in what? Is there anybody here that wants to die? Praise the Lord. <laughs> you you are complaining that things are difficult and that things are hard and you don't like this life and that you are suffering too much and so you made up your mind. Since life is not good, you want to take the other option. Is there anybody like that here? So, no matter how much you're suffering, you want to live. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. So no matter how much you think you are suffering, <laughs> you still want to live. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? 
Even if you say that God is not good, yet, even if you have a bad life, you want to live it. Amen? I saw a sticker one time. If you don't like police, next time you see them robbers, don't call us. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There is none better than Jesus. There will never be any without Jesus. There will be nothing new. There will be nothing great without Christ. If Christ is in you, the Bible said that is the only hope of glory. If Christ is in you, amen. I want to talk to you about life in Christ and why it is so important. The Bible said to us in John chapter 11 that a man called Lazarus died. I don't know, I'm sure many of you have read that story. I'm not going to read the entire uh, this thing. And then they sent to Jesus that the person whom you love is dead. The Bible says Jesus did not hurry to go there. Jesus stayed where he was. And then they ended up burying Jesus, sorry, burying Lazarus because Jesus did not come on time. But Jesus finally showed up. He came. Oh yes, the Lord always show up. The Lord always show up. God said to Abraham, I will come back to you. He said, I will return back to you at the appointed time. At the time of life. Genesis chapter 18. He said, I will come back to you. He said, when I come back to you, Sarah will surely have a son. I had told Sarah, Sarah will have a baby. Sarah laughed. Can I have a baby being old and my Lord being old and somebody said to me, you are going to have a son. I know somebody here that is saying that the year has ended and the year of divine visitation, there has not been a visitation. You are saying it that pastor said to us, God will surely visit you. And we are in December and no visitation. Who told you that the year has ended? You are the one ending the year before the time. Are you hearing me? They waited for Jesus and because Jesus did not come, they buried Lazarus. But Jesus said, I will surely come. I will surely come. I will surely come. Even though you have buried your vision, I will wake that vision up. Amen. Even though you have lost purpose, God said, when I come, you will regain it. Amen. The Bible said, when Jesus came to Bethany. When Jesus came, they were already blaming him. Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, Lazarus wouldn't have died. Amen. If you had been here, they were already blaming Jesus for not coming on time. And sometimes we blame where we're supposed to be praying. And Martha said something. He said, but I still know that if you ask God anything, God is still able to do it. Mary came. Mary said the same thing. Lord, if you were here, my brother would not have died. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. If you had been here, and Jesus said, where did you lay him? Where is he that is dead? Praise the Lord. I don't know where you had buried your business because you thought he's dead. 
I don't know where you have buried your plans you made for this year because it's December. Jesus is saying, where did you bury it? It's time for you to wake up. Praise the Lord. He said, dry bones shall live again. He said, dry bones shall live again. The Bible said they took him to where they buried Lazarus. It was already four days. He said to them, roll away the stone. They said, master, master, he is thinking by now. Jesus said, roll away the stone. Uh, many of you, that obedience is what is standing between you and your miracle. Are you hearing me? Jesus said to them, roll away the stone. They began to explain logic to Jesus. Master, the body is already stinking. And Jesus said, roll away the stone. Praise the Lord. Can you afford to reopen that business plan? Can you look into it again? I know it's December. I know that in less than three weeks, the year will be over. But God made the whole world in one week. What is your problem? You are unbelief. Praise the Lord. I know that my God is a specialist with last minute miracles. <laughs> when all hope is gone. Shadrach, Meshach, Abadnego, they were cast into the fire because they refused to bow before their idol. The king was waiting to see them born. He said, let me see if your God will deliver you in the fire. He sat. The fire was so hot that those that threw them into the fire were consumed. That's what the Bible says. He said, heat it up. Heat up the furnace seven times hotter so that they will die without trace. Amen. He said, heat up the furnace seven times. Make it hotter. Make it hotter. The king said, I must see these three Hebrew children that will not bow to my idol. I must see them burn. Oh, oh, I have news for you this morning. The expectations of your enemies will be disappointed. As the Lord liveth. As the Lord liveth. As the king sat watching, fire will consume the Hebrew children. They threw them in. First, they didn't fall to the ground. They threw them. They were supposed to fall. They were standing. And they started walking in the fire. They were walking in the fire. The king looked. They were not crying in the fire. He called the commander, his wise men. He said, come. Am I? Is something wrong with me? He said, how many people did we throw in, in the fire, please? How many? They said to him, your highness, there were three. He said, but please, look, look with me. We, did, how many did you say? He said, three. He said, but I see four people having party. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It wasn't his wise men that were seeing double. It was the king himself. He said, but I see four people having party in the fire. He said, but, but, the fourth man, there is something about the fourth man in the fire. David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he said, I will fear no evil. 
Shout hallelujah. He said, because the fourth man is also the second man. He says, I will fear no evil, for I know he is with me. Praise the Lord. And the king said, the fourth man had the appearance. He has the form of the son of the most high God. Praise the Lord. How did the king get to know Jesus? He has never seen him before. Amen. He has never seen the vision of Jesus. I have news for you this morning. When Jesus visits you, your neighbors will know. And if you will believe the word of the servant of God this morning, before 1st of January, your neighbors will know. Your neighbors will see. As the king recognized the fourth man, they will recognize the second man in your life. Because when they see, they will see differently. When they behold, they will behold differently. And I don't know the cases you have closed this year because of death. I reopen them now. I said, under the unction of the spirit and from this altar of Jehovah, I begin to reopen cases. Amen. Everything that has been closed against you, I reopen them. Amen. That depth that is a burden in your life, I send help for you. Amen. That depth will be cancelled. I say that debt that has troubled you day and night, it will be cancelled. That quit notice, it is only a notice. It is not that you have quitted. It is only a notice. Under the unction, I reverse it in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I send help to your people. Whatever the situation whatever the condition, as they leave the service today, going home, they will meet a miracle. Amen. Within the week, they will see a miracle. Amen. Before 31st, they will see a miracle. Amen. Lord, you said you confirm the words of your servants. You said, believe the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe also his prophet and you shall prosper. I bring prosperity into your life. I bring prosperity into your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, then, you will see good things. And good things will see you uh, before the end of this year. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. If that is you, shout a big hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible said, the Bible said that Jesus went to the grave and commanded Lazarus to come back to life. Amen. And Lazarus woke up. Your business is waking up. Amen. Your plan is waking up. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, everything that God has made, if you add to it, it becomes strange. Amen? God made man with five fingers. If you see the one with seven, you wouldn't like to shake hands with the person, true or false? Huh? Uh huh? God made man with one head. If you see the one with two. Amen? God made man with two legs. If you see the one with four. 
And so you can never add to God's perfection. But man is always improving. The cars of this year, they will produce another one next year. That's why they call new model. God does not have new model. God only have new breed. Shout hallelujah. And I'm happy that I'm part of the new breed. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Praise the Lord. So the Bible said that they took Jesus to the tomb of Lazarus. And as he got there, he called Lazarus and he commanded him to come forth. The Bible said Lazarus came forth. Praise the Lord. There was joy. Everybody was happy. Amen. But when you go to John chapter 12, you will find out that not everybody was happy. Amen. Don't expect everybody to be happy with you because you are doing well. Amen. Even among your family members, don't expect them to be happy because you are making progress. The Bible tells us in John chapter 12, verse 9, John chapter 12, verse what? Are you there? The Bible said, Now a great many of the Jews knew that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only. Now, the Jews are the people of Lazarus. They are Lazarus people. Amen. They are the people of Mary and Martha because they are all Jews. So when they came, they didn't just come for Jesus' sake. The Bible said, but, but, but that they might also see Lazarus. Is that in your Bible? Whom he had raised from the dead. Shout hallelujah. He had raised Lazarus from the dead. So they came to see Jesus. They came to see Lazarus also. Verse 10. It's not every invitation you should welcome. Amen? Read verse 10, everybody. Read it again, verse 10. Who are the chief priests? You, many people are accused pastors about so many things in this our time. Amen? You accuse pastors about so many things, even though many of them are not true. 95% of the accusations against pastors are not true. Amen. Amen. It's not true. But the Bible said the chief priests, the senior pastors of that time, what were they planning? They planned to kill Lazarus. You say, ah, Lazarus, you. You become famous. What was the reason why they wanted to kill Lazarus? Did Lazarus say anything to them? Did Lazarus speak to them? Read your Bible, verse 11. What was the reason why they wanted to kill Lazarus? Again. The Bible said because of Lazarus, People were becoming believers. You said that ever since you got a job, you've been having an attack everywhere. Because your job is a signal in the kingdom that you have come to be important. And whosoever that is important in the kingdom of God will face attack. Whosoever that is relevant in the kingdom of God, you will have challenges. 
It has been like that from the beginning. It will continue to be like that. It started with Adam. The moment you have a purpose and a vision in the kingdom of God, you will have challenges. You will have attack. Because devil does not like you. And devil will never like you. But God loves you. And God will always love you. And his love is greater than the hatred of the whole world. I said to you, the love of God is greater than the hatred of the whole world. If you can come to a place where God will love you, God will love you. Forget the world. Forget the attack. Are you hearing me? No child of God will ever be disadvantaged in this world. Because the whole world lies in destruction and in darkness. And when the light shines, darkness must go. That is God's plan. That is God's design. Anytime the light will shine, darkness must run away. There is no way darkness will be comfortable with the light. They are not the same. They cannot be the same. They cannot agree. They are meant to disagree. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Light and darkness. They are meant to disagree eternally. There is no friendship between two of them. Praise the Lord. They are meant to be eternally in disagreement. And therefore, sorry, transmission is back on. So is everybody connected again? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I said to you, light will always disarm darkness. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. If you are just connecting back to this service, especially those of you in Munich, we are sorry about what happened. We are getting better in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. But while the connection was off, we waited also, and we just started a few minutes ago. And we were just talking about Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead, from John chapter 11. And now we are reading the scripture from John chapter 12. John chapter 12, from verse 9 to 11, where the Jews came to see Jesus and also to see Lazarus. And they wanted to kill Lazarus again because many came to believe in Christ because of his resurrection. And I was just saying that it's not everybody that will celebrate your success. It's not everybody that will be happy that you've made it. And I said, light and darkness was never meant to agree. They were meant to be in disagreement. Praise the Lord. Light, light and darkness was meant to be in disagreement. So the Bible said, they came, the chief priest, they were planning how to kill Lazarus. Because then, if they can kill Lazarus, they can say, well, you say that Jesus raised him from the dead, but the man is dead again. Amen? Amen. The man is what? Dead again. And then they will say, what Jesus did was not real. They want to discredit the miracle in your life. They want to question the hand of God upon your life. They want to create doubt of the purposes of God in your life. Praise the Lord. And so Jesus saw the heart of man. And so Jesus understood the heart of man. 
And Jesus said, no problem. I have a better plan now. I am going to raise people from the dead that they cannot kill anymore. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Does that sound familiar to you? I said to you now, Jesus saw that the one he raised from the dead, they wanted to kill, to discredit. And then Jesus said, now, I am going to raise people from the dead they cannot kill anymore. Ephesians chapter 2. I want you to be so alert. I want you to be so ready to receive what God is speaking to us today. Ephesians chapter 2. We are reading from verse 4 to 7. And I'm reading from the New Living Translations. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 2, from verse 4 to 7. Are we there? Yes. New Living Translation I'm reading. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loves us so much. Verse 5, that even though we were dead because of our sins, we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. He gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. We were dead in sin or dead in trespasses. But when he raised Christ from the dead, the Bible says he quickened us. He made us alive. He raised us alive. Praise the Lord. And Verse 6 says, For he raised us from the dead along with Christ. Is that in your Bible? For he raised us from the dead along with Christ. He raised us. He didn't leave us. He raised us from the dead with Christ. And did what? And seated us. Is that in your Bible? And seated us with him also in the heavenly realms because what we are united with Christ Jesus shout hallelujah shout hallelujah he made us alive he raised us with Christ he made us to sit with Christ not on earth where they can kill us again the Bible said that Lazarus was seated at the table with Christ and they wanted to kill him. God said, okay, if the table on earth will bring them to kill you, when I raise you now, I will not make you seated on earth. I will take you with Christ so that you will sit at the table where Christ sits at my right hand. Praise the Lord. You need to get this. You need to get this. The Bible said that Lazarus was seated at the table with Christ in John chapter 12, and they wanted to put him to death. And now, after the resurrection, when he made us alive, he didn't keep us back like Lazarus was kept back. He raised us with Christ. Amen? And then also, he made us to be seated higher than where they can reach you. Praise the Lord. He made us to sit in the heavenly realms with Christ. Nobody can get there to kill you again. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you, the world goes from death to death. Christians goes from life to abundant life and to eternal life. Praise the Lord. From the day people are born in the world, they start dying. They start counting their years. Amen? And so the world goes from dead to dead to eternal death. The Christian goes from death to life. And then from life to abundant life. And then from abundant life to eternal life. Shout hallelujah. Make no mistake. 
Abundant life and eternal life are two, two different types of life. Amen. When Jesus said, I have come, John chapter 10, verse 10, that they may have life and have it more abundantly. He's talking about life you will live here. It's abundant life here. Amen. But there is another life beyond abundant life. It's called what? Eternal life. And so when the Bible said, he raised us with Christ, first, he made us alive. From our deadness, he made us alive. Say, I'm alive. I'm alive. When you are saved, the moment you are saved, you are made alive. You need to get it. Every Christian that is saved, you are from death to life. Praise the Lord. Now, to be raised, to be raised is a function of your fellowship with the word of God. Your fellowship in Christ. So, abundant life is up to you. If you want, you can live abundant life. If you want, you can live a poor life. But God's will for everyone that is born again is abundant life. It's your choice. Let me ask you, do you think that if the world have a true secret for long life, do you think you can afford it? No. Did you hear what I just said? If the world have the secret to long life, do you think you can afford it? For where? For where? How? Bill Gates first. Warren Buffett. Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, are you hearing me? Even when it gets to Africa, if it does get to Africa, if it does get to Africa, it will be Dangote. Are you hearing me? Bua Group. Uh, what's his name? Glow Guy. What's his name? Mike Adenuga. Before your name will be heard, ah, be, they say they have the concoction for long life. Huh? Not this is in heaven. This one, they say they have discovered it on earth. And man have it. They say if you take it, you will live 250 years. Right? And you will not get old. And then, let's say they made a the mistake. All the people in the U.S. have gotten it. People in Europe, Asia, and then they landed in Africa. Do you think you will get it? No. Do you think you can afford it? You. You. Have you even gotten a Nigerian passport? Let's start from there. Praise the Lord. No. Do you have the Nigerian passport? Driver's license, do you have it? The NIN that is free, you knew what it took you. <laughs> This one is supposed to be what? Free everywhere. You know what you went through to get it, isn't it? Yes, sir. Is it not true? Yes, and now they say there is long life available. And that it has come to Africa. And you want to get it. You. You. But Jesus said, I have come. That day, that day, that Alpha can have life. Praise the Lord. I don't need connections to have it. That's why I got it. Are you hearing me? I don't need to pay to get it. That's how I got it. Are you hearing me? No, 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 no. You are not getting this. I don't know. I don't need to know Tinibu to get it. I don't need to know Buhari to get it. Right now, I have it. They don't have it. Shout hallelujah, somebody. And Jesus said, I have come that they that believe in me, that they may have life and have it what? More, more, more. Where is the end of more? Where is the end of more? 
where is the end of more? Where does more end? And if he says that they may have more life, we can say, okay. But he says that they may have it more abundantly, continuously. Shout hallelujah. Life in Christ is abundant life. Then ask me, Pastor, why are so many people suffering then? Ask me that question if you want to know the answer. Ask me now. Ask me the question if you. Uh, okay, I won't explain it. Ask me the question again. Ask me the question again. How many of you came to our night? <laughs> Thank you. How many of you did not come? Raise your hand. Just hold on now. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You see, I asked how many of you came for the all night? Those that came, raise your hand. I asked how many of you did not come raise your hand? All of them refused to raise their hand. Even in the house of God, they disobey instruction. That's your answer. Even in the house of God, in the presence of Jehovah, you were asked, if you didn't come to the honor and raise your hand, you refused to raise your hand. What will pastor do to me? What will pastor do to me? Let him come. Let me show him. I will not come. You are already being shown. Are you hearing me? How many of you did not come for one night? Raise your hand. If you didn't come, stand up. Let me tell you. This is how cheap it is to make peace with God. You repented. You stood up. Many are still seated. That is rebellious spirit. The people that are still seated, have been after the second chance, they are those that you know the hardness of their heart and how rebellious they are. Do you, get it? Do you see what is happening in church? The one that got the explanation, suddenly their heart was pricked. And I said, stand up. They stood up. But the ones that nothing God do, we move them and shake them. Who is God? Is he not my neighbor? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Say, Father. Those of you stand, lift up your hand. Say, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Help me, Lord, to be obedient to your word at all times. Praise the Lord. Take your seat. You see, the Bible said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's what the Bible says. The Bible said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The moment you resist the knowledge and the obedience to God's word, the devil will punish you. Even if God chooses not to touch you, the devil will not leave you untouched. You know why? Because God has made a decree in his word. He says the wicked will not go unpunished. Simple. Even when God will not touch you, the devil will not leave you. Ah! You know, when you don't pay your school fees, they drive you away from school, isn't it? Until you pay your school fees, isn't it? <laughs> or they will flog the children, isn't it? When you don't pay your tithe, who will send you away? Will anybody send you away for not paying tithe? Will anybody ever flog you in church for not paying tithe? We will never do it. Never. 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 No church will do it. But the problem is that somebody else that will do it. Praise the Lord. Every 
everybody pays tight on it. Everybody pays tight. But I'm not going to teach you about that today. I will teach it to you in the new year. Why it is in your own interest to pay God instead of devil to collect it. Praise the Lord. So the Bible said that we have been made alive by Christ just like Lazarus was raised from the dead. And we were not just made alive, we were made alive, we were raised alive. We were not just raised alive, but we are now seated in Christ in the heavenly realm. Shout hallelujah. We are seated far above the world. We are seated far above sickness and diseases. We are seated far above persecution. We are seated far above death. We need to get the truth. Christians don't die. Christians don't die. Are you hearing me? Whatever the world gives you will eventually die. Did you hear what I just said? Whatever, even success from the world will die. The glory from the world will someday die. The beauty from the world will someday die. Everything that comes from earth must come back to earth. For God said, dust you are and dust you must return to. And everything made in life is from dust. And so they must come back to dust. For God has decreed it. Beauty must come back to dust. Beauty to ashes. Are you hearing me? How do you know? If you bury somebody after one week, go and open and see the beauty. No, go and see the beauty. Go and see. Nothing in this world has its own life in it. You hear what I said? Nothing in this life carries its own life. Nothing. The only people that are life carriers are people that are born of Christ. He says, as we bore the image of the first Adam, who was a living soul, even so, we have the image of the second Adam, or the last Adam. The Bible said the first Adam was a living soul. The second Adam was what? Was what? A life-giving spirit. We are life givers. We are generators. You know, this generator now is giving us light. Are you hearing me? Those in Christ generate life. Are you hearing me? They generate, we generate life. Jesus said, he that believes in me, out of his innermost being, out of innermost being, shall flow rivers, what? Of living water. I remember some time ago in Munich, in the church, they said to me that this guy that has been so sick, they said, can't sleep, troubled on every side, having an attack. As I was ministering, I called him. I looked at him. I looked at him. I said, come. He came. I took him. I said, I'm not going to pray for you, but I'm going to transmit life to you. I embraced him. I embraced him. I said, now, I breathe life back to you. And as I left him, the power of God carried him. The next week, the man stood to share testimony. He said, when pastor heard me, something left me, but something from him entered into me. Say, we are life givers. It's you that don't take this thing serious. Those that take it serious do not regret but those that don't take it serious always regret. John chapter 6. Before we close. John chapter 6 from verse 47. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The 
John chapter 6. Are we there? From verse 47. And I'm reading from the new translation again. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes, anyone who believes has what? Eternal life. Anyone. Anyone. It doesn't matter. I was telling you the other day, I am not a Nigerian. I am not an African. As long as you are a Nigerian, you will have Nigerian problems. When you are born again, when you are saved, you are no longer a Nigerian. It is impossible for you to be a Nigerian and a Christian at the same time. Are you hearing me? Either you are a Christian or you are a Nigerian. Either you are a Christian or you are a German. Either you are a Christian or you are an American. You can't be both at the same time. And that's where people don't understand. The Bible said in the book of Ephesians, he said, our citizenship is in heaven. No, did you hear what I said? My citizenship is not on planet Earth. I am a visitor here. One day I will go. If you check into a hotel, don't you check out? No, don't you check out? Many of you don't understand what I'm talking about because you love the world too much. Say, I am not a Nigerian. Not a Nigerian. Say, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Therefore, Therefore, I must live, I must live like, Christ. like Christ. I refuse, I refuse. to live like a, like a Nigerian. When Nigerians are having a wedding, they want a big wedding. When a Christian is having a wedding, he wants a glorious wedding. There may be only three people that will be in the wedding, but it will be glorious. Are you hearing me? But when Nigerians are having a wedding, they want a big wedding. But when a Christian is having a wedding, he wants a glorious wedding. And so, as we are here now, as we are here now, if the spirit wills, I can call two people and get them married here on the spot. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. They will come to church as singles. They go back married. Why are you scrubbing your head? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Makeup or makeup or no makeup, attachment or no attachment, you get married here. You are shocked. <laughs> Is there anybody shocked among you here? Let me pray. I thought as much. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because if they are shocked, they will see a miracle now. Gloria. Gloria, are you here? You are here? Are you in shock about it? You know it's a reality. Because if any of them is in shock, they will see practical here. Praise the Lord. I know what you are thinking. Pastor, if you wed me, you, I'll run away. Before you run, go and read Jonah, the book of Jonah. See how far you can run. Are you hearing me? If I wed you and you run, oh, oh, I'm sorry for you. Praise the Lord. If Pastor Alpha wed you and you run away, hey, the first seven night, Koboko, from midnight to 3 a.m., I won't look for you, you will look for me. Praise the Lord. Go and ask them what it has happened before. They say, Pastor, you can't do it. I cannot do it. Okay. Go and read Jeremiah chapter 1. God said, I've given you power to do what? To do what? Should I show you the scripture? You want to see it? <laughs> uh, you are trying me this morning. Maybe after showing you, then I may practice something here. 
Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus' name so sweet. Emmanuel's name so wonderful. Jesus' name so beautiful. Ha-ha! Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let me tell you. Learn to respect contracts bind with the name of Jesus. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? Be afraid of documents bound in the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus' name so glorious. Jesus' name so beautiful. Jesus' name so holy. Oh, Jesus' name is so powerful. Everybody stand on your feet. Jeremiah chapter 1. You are there by now. From verse 9. Amen. Are we there? Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I have put my word where? In your mouth. Continue to read. <laughs> mm -hmm. Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to do what? To root out and to pull down. To destroy and to throw down. To build and to do what? Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Did you understand that? Good. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. Are we there? Yes, sir. Are we there? Yes, <laughs> Let's read that together. Let me see if I'm confirming what you read. He said, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Who is he giving the kingdom? The keys. We, right? And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Are you still in doubt about getting married this morning? Are you still in doubt? Thank you. Even them here knows that they will experience practice if they're in doubt. Did you ever read from John chapter 2? He says, whatever he tells you to do. Who was he talking to? Who? We. He said, nobody will tell me what to do. Nobody will tell me. When I'm your pastor, tell that to me. Praise the Lord. Do you wonder why Christians are suffering? Jesus said you have made the word of God of no effect in your life because of the way you live. That's what Jesus said. He said you have made the word of God. You have made it invalid. You have made the word of God powerless because of your attitude. May you have somebody to tell you what to do. Amen. You've been doing things the way you want it. Okay, what is, see the way it has turned out in your life so far. No, are you happy with the way things are with you? Let's be honest. Just because you are wearing makeup does not mean we do not see the cry. Come to Christ and have a good life. Any instruction from the word of God will make your life better. 
You may not like it, but it will like you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I wish I had been properly taught when I was a young Christian. The things the Lord is teaching you now here, I wish I had been taught those things early. You know the kind of exploits I would have done with that knowledge. With the knowledge, knowing that you are unstoppable, you know what we could have done. And now you are getting that information and you are still sitting like this. We, we had just a mere teaching, a mere teaching from when we were baptized. We just had a mere teaching, not this kind of revelation and see what happened in our life. Imagine if you were to have this type of revelation. Praise the Lord. When I was baptized in 1980, I wish I had this revelation. I wish I had known that I am unstoppable. I wish I had known I, I could be a possessor of nations. Anywhere I have traveled on earth, I would have set a foundation there. And you are learning it. And you are learning it. And you can't even possess your compound. You can't be spiritually in charge in your compound. You say, landlord is troubling me. Uh, the landlord's daughter is troubling me. Landlord's son is troubling me. And you are a Christian. You are born again for 12 years. Landlord is troubling you. The son is troubling you. The daughter is troubling you. What happens to the power of the spirit? No, what happens to the power of the spirit? You go in the spirit. You just spend some time in the spirit. Bro, send the ketubra lege de brasi takaya. Le ketubra sakaye bro to kaya male. Le kabro sota male kede le bro sonda kada. I am the light in this compound. And I will shine. I cannot be stopped. Father, put it in the heart of the landlord and the children to love me. Because I am your representative here. I cannot be harassed. I cannot be molested. Praise the Lord. You may be owing house rent does not qualify them to harass you. Nigeria as a government is owing. Are you hearing me? Nigerian government is owing. America is owing. So what you are owing is peanut. Why should somebody take sleep away from you? You go home midnight because you are owing landlord. New creation when you are going home. How long will you be tortured? No, how long? You know where the problem is? The problem is not with your landlord. The problem is with your God. You have mocked God. You have deceived God. That's the problem. And if you will change, things will change for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Abundant life. He said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. He says, we have been made alive. We are not dead anymore. Beyond being made alive, we've been raised with Christ. We've been done what? Raised with Christ. And we are what? Seated in Christ. Seated in a comfortable place. Seated in spirit means that you will not be troubled physically. Because we live from the spirit. We don't live from the physical. Are you hearing me? Yes, Say, I am in comfort zone in Christ. I am in comfort zone in Christ. Nobody will harass me. Nobody will, harass me. Nobody will molest me anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every reproach that brings shame into your life, I command you to go now. Amen. Whatsoever there is a reproach in your life, I command you to go in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Whatever that brings the regret in your life, even the memory of it, I command you to end. Amen. I command you to end. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you with abundant life. I bless you with abundant peace. I bless you with the joy of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, I have decreed peace for you. No one will trouble you anymore. I have decreed testimony for you. You will not end this year in regret. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
whatsoever that was an obstacle become a step now to your progress. I convert every problem to a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed. You are blessed. And you are blessed. In Jesus' precious name. Shout a big hallelujah. Let's bring out our tithes and our offering unto the Lord, which is what God requires. The Lord requires that we bring tithes an offering and seed where necessary unto him to appreciate him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please take the mic to Pastor Isaac for him to bless the tithe and the offering. Thank you, Jesus. Have you learned something now? It is foolishness to plan big wedding. Amen? Our Father and our God, we thank you once again this morning. We are grateful unto you for your word that is always coming unto us. The word of life. The, your word has come again today to transform us. Father, we know that we can never remain the same again in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we lift up our offering before you. It's by your grace that we are able to come before you with our offering. Father, we ask that your blessing be upon it in the name of Jesus. Amen. We ask that you will sanctify it in the name of Jesus. Amen. This offering shall be used for the expansion of your work on earth in Jesus' name. Amen. For every hand that is lifted up this morning, such hand will never go down. Such hand we never lack. Amen. We not borrow. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. For everyone that has come with their tithe, Heavenly Father, you have promised that you will open the windows of heaven and pour down your blessing upon them. We thank you, Father, because you are faithful to your word. And so shall it be for every tithe at this one in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And every devourer is rebuked in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, next Sunday is what? 18th, right? And then after next Sunday is what? Christmas. So we are two Sundays away from Christmas. Isn't that wonderful? Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. Now, next Sunday will be our Thanksgiving service. Next Sunday will be our Thanksgiving service. Everywhere, globally, praise the Lord. And it's going to be glorious. And it's going to be wonderful. And it's going to be combined service also. Praise the Lord. So... Next Sunday, Christmas service, we will all be here together in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please take your seat. And after the Thanksgiving service, we will now have discussion about our preparation for the Christmas service. Because Christmas service is on Sunday, so we want to celebrate together as a family. That means we are going to cook and eat and celebrate here all day on the 25th in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, please, if you know how to cook and you know you can be available, amen? If you know how to cook, please... At the end of the service, you can see mommy or you can see mercy. In case if mommy is not available. Amen. Amen. Give your name. Because we need to plan towards 25th. We want to have our celebration as a family together here. Praise the Lord. So whatever you can cook, whatever you can do, please make yourself available. We are not saying bring money. 
We are saying make yourself what? Available. And give your name so that we can plan it how it can be done. So that by next Sunday, we will let you know what you need to do. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Would you, would you like us to celebrate together as a family? And so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. And for Thanksgiving service, we need to invite as many of our friends as possible because Thanksgiving is a celebration service. It's actually giving glory to God. It's actually acknowledging God for his faithfulness. And I believe that God has been good to all of us. Praise the Lord. And as we give thanks to him, we can look forward to the new year with great expectation. Shout hallelujah. Say thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Now, if you are here and you are not born again, or if you are online and you are not born again, you can't have a new life in Christ without being born again. And every time we meet together here, it's an opportunity for you to get born again. Because the, only, the new life comes to you the moment you are born again. Therefore, if you are here and you are not born again, you know you are not born again. Maybe you have backslidden. You used to be born again. But now, you know that your relationship with God is not right. Raise your hand. If you are here, you are not born again. And you would like to get born again. Let me see your hand. Anybody here, you want to get born again? Praise the Lord. You can't make heaven except if you are born again. And I'm glad that you confirm that you are born again because this opportunity serves as a witness when you refuse to take the invitation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Pastor Isaac, please just take him, minister to him in the corner there. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say God is good. God. Say God is good. God. And if you are here today, it's your first time. Somebody invited you, somebody called you, somebody sent you a message. By any means, you got to be here. If today is your first time of worshiping with us, we'd like to recognize you and acknowledge you and welcome you. If today is your first time, anybody here, let's see your hand. Today is your first time. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Please keep your hand. Keep your hand up. Please. God bless you. Please stand on your feet. Take one more step. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Ushers, help them. We have a seat reserved for you there. Please take your Bible. Take your bag. Somebody is coming to you. Please help them. We want to welcome you on behalf of our Lord Jesus Christ to God's family church. It's our pleasure to have you. You are an answer to our prayer, and we are glad that you are here. And we want to say that if you don't have a local church where you are very active, meaning that you participate in that, prayerfully consider to be a member of God's family church, and here you will be activated into service, serving the Lord with all your heart. Praise the Lord. We welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Have you been blessed? Have you been blessed? Oh, my boy told me I didn't call him for his birthday. Ah, let me not forget this. Please, we'll share the grace in one minute. He told me, mommy called him and prayed for him on his birthday already. He came specifically to complain. He said, Daddy, you did not call me for my birthday. I said, no problem. I can correct that. Forgive me. He said, okay, no problem. Praise the Lord. Please bring his cake. Honey, please come. Where is the knock? Please bring his cake and bring his friends. Let him come and cut his cake. Shout hallelujah. Enoch is four. I bless every one of you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And all the prayers and blessings that have been pronounced here, let it become a reality in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are blessed. You are blessed. And you are blessed in Jesus' mighty name.